And we are starting. <laughs> okay, there, guests. Uh, I will start again from a little further away. Um, uh, the next guest, the next speaker, Imi, we've uh, come to know uh, in 2018, I think, if not earlier, uh, when it was the year for Imi, uh, the year for Levarden in Friesland region. This project was always very inspiring for our team, as I'm sure uh, it was for uh, many of the ECOG family, uh, so-called, uh, because of its consistency, uh, because of their regional approach, because of the Minskip um, uh, approach and Minskip uh, concept, let's say. Uh, in fact, IMI was responsible for a lot of this uh, community-led uh, program, I will call it like that. Um, and today she is here already in a little bit different role, since Levarden became uh, an example, quite, I would say, a rare example of uh, a continuing ECOG. Uh, after the year uh, finished in 2018, uh, Levarden Friesland region decided it is worth to continue in some scale uh, the activities that they were performing uh, within the European Capital of Culture framework. And so uh, Imi is today as the uh, director of the organization of the legacy organization of Leavarden Friesland um, uh, Capital of Culture. Her background is, of course, in cultural events. Uh, she started working for the ECOC in 2013, among other things. Um, she worked there in different roles, but finally as part of the artistic team. She left organization in 2018 and came back in 2019 uh, to work for the Legacy program. She is now the CEO of the Legacy organization and is with her team organizing Arcadia 2022, the first of at least three triennial cultural events. The first is to be held this summer, a cultural manifestation of a 100 days in the region of Friesland and the city of Leavarden. So I'm inviting Imi to share uh, her story, why it is worth to continue Capital of Culture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, thank you for inviting me. The lights are really bright. Could you please just... Is that possible? Otherwise, I can't see you. Um, anyway, thanks for uh, inviting me here. And I was here in 2018, and that was during our Cultural Capital Year. And now I'm here during our first uh, legacy program year. So that's very um, interesting and also exciting. So if you see me typing or f telephoning, it's because we just started our legacy program. I'm going to tell you everything about uh, our legacy program and also a bit for the people who don't know Leeuwarden and Friesland as a cultural capital. I'll just tell you a bit of um, the results of our capital capital. Cup capital culture and how we organize that. Um, and I was very happy with the previous discussion because a lot of things you said uh, that was happening here with Agatha, um, I really recognize from our year in 2018. So the story of Leeuwarden and Friesland, uh, we're in the Netherlands. Maybe you didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so this was our opening evening, opening event. Um, and we have three large squares in the city of Leeuwarden. This is one square, and the other two squares looked exactly the same. So we had a lot of people at our opening, and this is exactly what we wanted, because our program was all about community. It was all about grassroots, it was all about what we call me and skip. It's a Frisian word, we have our own language, Frisian, me and skip, and my goal is to introduce the word fr uh, me and skip all over Europe, and I think I'm getting there. <laughs> so, um, what did we do? I moved to this side, can I can read. Um, our uh, culture capital was all about communities, so um, we were... Our goal was to go from mean skip, so from community, to open community. We all live in our own communities, but our own communities are still our own communities in one square meter. And what we wanted to reach with our 
process on our cultural capital is to make this square meter like a square kilometer or even more. So open up your community. And we wanted to use culture as all uh, cultural capitals want. And we set ourselves a goal to have as many people possible to participate in our program. And of course, it's for the whole of the region. So not only the city of Leeuwarden, just like Kaunas does. Um, in the end, it sounds really easy if you talk <laughs> about it like this, but it has been a, quite a process. So, of course, you know here in Kaunas, it's, it's a long process. But in the end, we had um, um, a huge program. And we decided that we would have an official program, um, like a main program, and there we had 60 projects. And some of the projects also had sub-projects. So in total, there were about 200 events. And then we had our open community program, EPM and Skips program. And we had about four to 500 projects. And you could wonder why I'm not quite sure if it's four or 500 or 436, um, because we didn't really count. What we did, we said to everyone who developed an initiative, small, a big, big, bigger or really big, um, you can put it on our website. You don't have to call us, we don't have to see your plan, you just can put your project on our website, download our logo, put it on your poster, and you're part of our program. So we're not quite sure, <laughs> because it was not countable, but somewhere between the 400 and 500 projects. And it was organized by um, a lot of our partners. So we didn't do organize, we didn't produce our own projects except for the opening, uh, the closing ceremony, and the giants. We had the giants. You saw them this morning on the picture from Beatrice. Um, we had the giants as well. This is what we organized ourselves, and all of the rest of the program was organized by third parties, amateur, professional, semi-professional, but third parties. For us, that was really important because that way the knowledge you will develop during a cultural capital, you will keep in your region. And I think what we just heard in this discussion, you agree with me. So very short, the results, numbers, we all like numbers. Um, you can read it yourself, but I think what's a really, if you like numbers, what's really interesting is that um, our economic impact. So every euro we invested in our program came back as two point three euros at a minimum. It, to be totally honest, it's a bit higher, but this is what we can prove. <laughs> so it's 2.3 million. Um, and the total we invested in our program uh, regarding culture is uh, more than 100 million euros. So that does something with your cultural sector. It's a real, real boost for your cultural sector. And also very nice for us, of course, uh, we asked people what they thought of our program, and we got a 7.4 out of 10. So, pretty good. So, then May 2018. I was here in May 2018, <laughs> but around the same time we had a meeting with uh, the cultural sector, but also with government and other people. So, we had a meeting with a lot of our partners, and we were pr talking about legacy. Um, to be totally honest, we don't use the word legacy anymore. We're sick of the word legacy, so we're not using it anymore. But yeah, for sake of arguments, I just use it here. Um, but we said, what do we do with the legacy? What's next and what's after the cultural capital? And they said, give us a reason to keep on working together. I think it's exactly what you said. You said what the cultural capital brought us, um, friends people we know, people we can cooperate with. That's the same in our region, except for the fact that they said, we want to keep on cooperating and we need something to bring us back together. Um, and that day, the idea was born of a biannual. So every second year, a large scale event. That was the idea then. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so that was May 2018, and then um, reality hit again, and we had to work on the program, and we didn't have time to talk about legacy. We had um, a director legacy. He came up with a pamphlet and some ideas, but that's not really what we wanted for a legacy, so 
hardly any time to talk about legacy. Then in 2019, um, I left, but my colleague in the artistic team, Stuart, he stayed, and he worked on the legacy. Um, they had a lot of talks, and they had a first draft of a program. Then 2020, we decided to have a triannual. So every third year, we wanted a big scale event. So we decided that we wanted to continue the cultural capital feeling by organizing a large scale event. So not some small events, not um, asking other organizations to uh, organize something as the legacy of the cultural capital, but we wanted to do an event like a mini small cultural capital. That's what we decided. So 2020, um, we decided a triennial and that we wanted to do the first edition in 2022. And then COVID hit, of course, <laughs> you know all about that, but we still kept the focus on 2022. And we had discussions during 2020, 2021 as well, but we decided in November 2021 that we would focus on 2022 for our first edition of Acadia. And of course, Acadia, Acadia is the land of milk and honey, promised land. And we decided we would call it Acadia because we wanted to work on a better world with our program. If you do a cultural capital, um, you have to please a lot of people with your program. Um, so it has to be a program for everyone, but you also have to please your government, and you have to please Europe, and you have to, ple you have to please a lot of people. So you can't be really picky on what's in your program. And we said in 2020, when we came up with the first ideas, we said we want to have stricter goals. We want to work on a better world with our program. And I'll come back to that later on. So in 2021, we did this very, it was a good presentation, but it's very awful to do a digital presentation because you never know how many people are watching you. You can't react, you know, it's, it's uh, terrible. Anyway, we did it, so that's it. And then um, two weeks ago, we had our opening weekend. And I'll show you some pictures and tell you some more about our program. Um, and we are very happy that we had an opening weekend. And we are very happy that it's, there's no COVID and we can do almost what we want to do. So, um, Arcadia. We decided to do 100 days, and for the people that are really good in counting and mathematics, if you paid attention from 6th of May up until the 14th of August, it's 101 days. But 100 days is better communication-wise. <laughs> so it's 100 days. Um, exhibitions, performances, theater installations, trees. I'll get back to the trees as soon as possible. Ice skating ranks, I will get to the ice skating as well. Um, so what we decided was we want 100 days with a full program. One thing we learned from the cultural capital is that there has to be something going on every single day. Because we had people come to our information points in 2018 and they said, okay, where can I go today? And then we opened the book and we said, sorry, nothing going on today. And you can go shop or in the museum, it's probably open as well. So what we wanted to do was making a program where at least two big things are happening every single day. So we did. And also, um, we wanted to be more activist. So, I think we were, during the culture capital, we were a bit boring, maybe, um, because we had to please everyone. Not a lot of humor in our program, but also a bit of a... It, maybe it's a safe program, you know? It's, it's not... People can't, like, disagree but with what you do. It's, it's kind of safe. So, Stuart and I, of course, coming from the cultural capital, um, maybe sometimes being irritated by our artistic director or our fi financial director, and now we're in, in charge ourselves, so we can decide what we want to do, and we have said we want to do a more activistic program. Positive activism. That's it. And we said... 
our program is going to be about creating a better world. Leaving the world a bit better than you found it. So being a good ancestor. And this is our program book. And you can't read, read Dutch, so I understand. <laughs> but the title of our program book is In What World Do You Want to Live? And our program is about that. Every single project in our program um, makes sure that people think about what they do. So I said that the, the hard head hands. The program touches you, does something. You start to think about it, and then you start to act your hands. You use your hands. That's what we want to reach with the program. If it doesn't touch you, that's fine. If you have a nice day, great. You know, fine. But if it does something with your heart and your head, and you start acting on it, that's what we want to reach. Um, so we're the same organization, same foundation. Um, that really helps for funding. That uh, <laughs> you're the same, uh, same foundation. Um, we have a lot of partners. Um, and it's more of a cohesive program. It's more of a program that's, that's a total. It's, it's cohesive. Um, it was not cohesive in 2018. They were all part of the program, but they had no link. There was no link between projects, except that they were all part of the uh, cultural capital program. Now it's more... If you read the program book or on our website, which is in English, um, you can see that they work together on the same subject. So um, that was something that we wanted. We wanted to be have a more cohesive program. I told you about the positive activism. Um, so our budget, I don't know if I put that somewhere. Um, we are financed by our government with a large amount of money. Provincial government, so the region, is doing two million a year. Um, so that's a bit large amount. And also the city of Leeuwarden is contributing a lot. And for the rest we have sponsorships and stuff. So 2022, 2025, 2028, and on and on and on, I hope. <laughs> so just for you to compare 2018 as a cultural capital and um, what we're doing right now, our budget now is 10 million euros. So it's just a small amount of what we had in 2018. Um, and that means that our goals are smaller as well, of course. We aim at a 750,000 visitors be totally honest, visits, so not visitors, but visits, that's the difference. Um, and we aim at an active participation of 25,000 people. We're going to reach the 25,000 easily. Same goes for the visits, easily, but it's good to have your goals not too high up, so you can um, be better than you thought you should be. Um, and we are a smaller organization. And that's when I... <laughs> I wrote that down. We are a smaller organization. We are, but we still have, I think, at the moment, around 80 people working for us. And that's because we do three big projects ourselves. So uh, compared to 2018, when we hardly did any, uh, any producing ourselves, we're now producing the three larger projects ourselves. The reason why we do that is that we can't find an organization in our region that can organize a large-scale events like those two. They do not exist. And that's a problem. On the other hand, we decided that we wanted to produce everything ourselves, not our, but in our region. Um, in 2018, we had the Giants from uh, Royal Deluxe, and um, it was great to have that. But, um, you know, you do a phone call to France, and you tell them, we want you to come to Leeuwarden, and they say, fine, this is the bill, you have to pay x million euros. Um, it's simplification, you know that, of course, but that's <laughs> how it works. Um, and now we said, every big, large-scale project we're going to do, we're going to do it ourselves. So we're going to do it with the people that live in the Netherlands, anyway, um, hopefully in Friesland. Um, so we can keep every knowledge, every euro, keep them here. So that's what we did. Um, these are our goals. Well, if you're interested. And then why? 
Um, oh, sorry, I, I'm not used to these, um, excuse me. I think, and we all think in the team, that the legacy of a cultural capital is very, very, very important. Because when you start working on being a cultural capital, you have certain goals. You want to make a change, um, because you write that down in your bit book. So you have goals. And I think to reach those goals, you need more time. So you need a second or a third episode of your cultural capital. Because you can't reach all your goals in one cultural capital year, because you have to serve too many masters, if you understand what I mean. You have to please too many people. You can't make your program the way you want to make it. So I'm very happy that we are able um, to do uh, our Arcadia, our legacy program, because I think that we, um, we prepared the soil, planted the seeds, and now it's time to not have only one-year plants, but multiple-year plants and grow upon it. So it's not, a cultural capital is not the end. It's like uh, Agatha said, I think, in your presentation, it's, it's a step towards the future. Um, and also, we have, and we, this group, all of you that are now working on a cultural capital, have, have been working on a cultural capital, capital, have invested so many time, energy, and money in your cultural capital. It's a waste to not do a legacy. And also, the second year is so, a second time is so much easier. It is, believe me, so much easier. Um, we now have smaller municipalities calling me and telling me, listen to me, we got some money um, put away for the legacy organization, for a legacy program, where should I invest this in? That did not happen in 2018. Never. <laughs> but it happens now. It's so much easier, and I will s I'll tell you an example of that later on. So, then our legacy program. Of course, you all have to come to Leeuwarden and Friesland this summer. So, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. And also, look at our website. It's arcadia.frl. Uh, Arcadia FRL is for Friesland. .frl. This is the biggest project we're doing right now. It's also the most expensive project. It's called Bosk. Bosk, B-O-S-K. That's the Frisian word for forest. Bosk. Um, this drawing was made a year and a half, two years ago. And the guy that came up with this idea, um, he said, I want to take over the city of Leeuwarden. So the city center of Leeuwarden. Uh, and he said, I wanted to plant 1,200 trees in 800 containers, and I want to take over the city of Leeuwarden 100 days. I said, okay, nice plan. <laughs> Let's do it. And he made this drawing. And this drawing came to us, and we said, well, listen, this is an artist impression. I think I know why you make this, but maybe downsize it a bit, because this is not realistic. But this is now what's happening in the city center of Leeuwarden. We have 1,200 trees in 800 containers, taking over the city center. They are walking through the city center of Leeuwarden for 100 days. So they're disrupting the city center. Because we want people to know what it does to a city center if you have green trees in the city center. So important. Um, for an example, why it's so much easier to do it the second time. Um, with this idea and this drawing, we went to the municipality of Leeuwarden, to the director. And um, we had this long list of arguments why we should do this. So Shoot and I were sitting with him and said, well, this is what we want to do. We're going to disrupt your city center for 100 days. And um, he said, well, hmm, I think that's a great, great idea. Let's do it. So there we were with our list of arguments. But he, he agreed immediately. He said, yeah, we're going to do that. Next to that, what they're doing is they are um, all the people that work for the green department of the municipality are now working for our walking forest. Um, these guys have been planting the trees for, I think, three months in front of our office. Really, really nice. 
um, and they have, working for the, have been working for this project. Next to that, they have invested money and they also have bought the trees. The trees are worth more than a million dollars, a million euros. So they invested a lot of money in this project and we're co-producing this. Um, you don't know Leo Wadden, but on the mo most of you don't, I think. Um, the first weekend, we put the trees in front of the railway station that's very close to the city center. And in front of the station, there's this busy road, one of the busiest roads of the city center. And we put the trees there, so the road was closed. Um, and no one complained. So you came out of the city or out of the train station and you walked into a forest. And people loved it. They really, really loved it. This is um, a terrace opposite the train station, so we made a forest <laughs> around that as well. Um, on the first Saturday, they had no more cakes left on 12.30 in the afternoon. Completely sold out. Because it was so crowded on the terrace, because everyone wanted to sit in the forest. In the, no, you know what I mean. Um, and then after four days, we moved the forest, because that's the plan of the uh, project. So we moved the forest to the next stop. People were angry. <laughs> they wanted to keep the forest there. So now we're moving and we, we're always meeting people that want to keep the forest there where it is right now, but we're gon gonna move. So it's gonna walk through the city center and the walking goes like this. So that's me. <laughs> um, this was the opening and then I'm allowed to work. But um, So this is the train station, the white building in the background. Um, but this is how we move the trees. This machine thing was developed by a company in Leeuwarden. So we try to have everything done in the region, keep the money where it should be. And this is how it works. So we have a lot of volunteers and they are also part of the project. So every new group of volunteers will get an introduction by the artist. He will explain why we're doing this project. Um, so they know what to tell and know um, to express the importance of green in a built surrounding. I was there, I think last week, with a group of older men and mayors. And I was telling them about the trees and how we planted it and the importance of this project. And there was one of the people that worked at the green uh, department of the municipality. And he came st stand next to me and he said, uh, do they want to know about the trees? So yeah, well, he said, I planted them, so let me tell the story. <laughs> yeah, but that's what you want, of course, because they own now this project. And I think that's very important. I've got three more minutes left. <laughs> and about 70 projects to tell you, so. You know this one, of course, I think. It has been in Glasgow. This is uh, Gaia from Luke Jerem. Um, this is a picture of, uh, that was taken 50 years ago from the Earth. It's, I think it's, I don't know, it's large, it's huge. Um, and we decided that we wanted this work to show people the importance of um, the earth where we live on and how we treat it as well. And this one is traveling around the region of Friesland on six different places. And the nice thing is that it's almost completely paid by through the municipalities. That would not be happening in 2018. That we would not succeed in having municipalities contribute to a project like this. But it does. The second large project we have is um, called Paradis. Paradis is a Frisian word for paradise. It's a large-scale um, exhibition, art exhibition, outside a public space with a 15 international artists making mostly new work inspired by the location where we are organizing it. Uh, this is uh, Mariana Simnet, um, beautiful new work of her. Uh, reflecting on the fact that a lot of deer live in the region where the art exhibition is. Too many deers. So there's a huge discussion going on on shooting the deers or not. They don't belong there, there's too much, but people don't want to shoot them. I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> uh, Alicia Quade also 
Then there's ICE, large-scale means keeps program, where we ask communities to reflect on the situation with climate change and to use their ice skating rank. Every village in Friesland has, her own, has their own ice skating rank. It's just a meadow in the middle of the, of the village. And in winter, they all put water on it. And then when it freezes, you're going to ice skate on that. But of course, it never freezes anymore. So we want them to use those locations as their stage to produce their own um, like play or whatever they want to do. And we're helping them with money, but mainly with artistic help. Um, this is our performing arts festival we're organizing with small but very, very international and very interesting um, um, performance, arts, performance art. Uh, and when we have, yeah, I've got 20 more seconds, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, the thing I think I want to express mostly is that how important legacy is to uh, continue with the things you've done during your cultural capital. You have to continue, otherwise it's a waste of money. And you can continue by giving um, organizations, um, uh, making sure that other organizations uh, keep on continuing the work, or you do it yourself in the form of a large-scale event. We did the last thing. So, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> Sorry, too late. <laughs>